Okay, in this lesson I'm going to show you how to get the equation from a parabola, and I'll go through two, two different cases. Uh, the first case is when you're given a parabola, and the x-intercepts right here are the roots of the equation, and one other point on the curve are given. And in this case, that one other point is the y-intercept. So if that's the case, we're going to use the general form of y equals a times brackets x minus c times x minus d, where c and d are the, going to be the x-intercepts, or the roots, where c and d are the x-intercepts. Okay, so let's plug the values in here, and these will be the points that you're given. Okay, so I've got my x-intercepts of negative 6 and 10, and my y-intercept of 12, which I'll use that in a bit. So first, I substitute the values in my general formula. I'm going to solve for a, like I do in my other video. So I don't know what that is yet. That's going to be the scale factor of the parabola. That's going to describe the shape of it. And x minus the negative 6 minus the negative 6 is just the same as plus 6. And x minus that positive 10. And now what I want to do is substitute a coordinate, substitute a value of x and y into the equation here to solve for a. And that coordinate is going to be 0, 12, which is my y-intercept. And remember, the first one is x, and the second one is y. So I substitute those values in to solve for a. 12 is y. I don't know what a is yet, and x is 0. And I simplify everything inside the brackets. 0 plus 6 is 6, times 0 minus 10 is negative 10. And I multiply all of this together, and that becomes my coefficient of negative 60a. So to solve for a, I'm going to divide 12 by negative 60, which gives me negative 1 fifth. Now what I do with that constant is substitute it back into my formula here and rewrite the equation. y equals negative one-fifth times x plus six times x minus ten. Now let's look at one other example where I'm given the x-intercepts but not necessarily the y-intercept. So let's look at this one here. Write the general formula, which is going to be y equals a x minus c over, not over, times x minus d, where c and d are the x-intercept. Well, that x-intercept is 0, and this one is 8. So it looks like this to start off with. And x minus 0 is just x. So this simplifies to just a times x times x minus 8. Now I do the same steps as before, but instead of substituting the y-intercept, I substitute this point, x, y. So y is negative 2. a is, I don't know yet, x is 7. And x is 7 there as well. Simplify on the right side. And I get 7 times a is 7a, and 7 minus 8 is negative 1, which will get multiplied to this term right here. So I get negative 2 equals negative 7a. And finally, to solve for a, I'm going to divide negative 2 by negative 7. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So my constant term here is 2 sevenths. And I'm going to take that value and substitute it back into this formula right here. So I get y equals 2 sevenths x, two sevenths x times x minus 8. And any time I have 0 as an intercept here um, in this form, then I'm always going to have x by itself outside the brackets here. Because uh, x take away 0 just gives me an x.
Okay, let's look at the next case. Uh, the next case is when we're not given the x-intercept, but a turning point is given, and one other point on the curve. A turning point is also called a vertex, or a maximum or minimum. In this case, it would be a minimum, the lowest part of the curve. So what do we do here? Um, we pay attention to the turning point, and the, the general form for this one is y equals a times x minus b squared plus c, where the coordinate bc is the turning point, or vertex, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is the formula that we want to go by when we're given a turning point and, and some other point on that curve. So what we do here, we substitute the values in for the vertex. And the vertex here is 3, 5. So we get y equals, I don't know what a is yet, x minus 3 squared plus 5. And you probably know what to do already. I substitute a value in for x and y, which will be 15. And that's the y-intercept, so that's 0, 15, x, y. And that goes in here to solve for a, and then I'll rewrite the equation again. So y is 15. Not sure what a is yet. x is 0. Now watch out here, because anytime you square something on these problems, it's going to turn out positive. So negative 3 bracket squared will be 9, not negative 9. That becomes a coefficient here. So 15 equals 9 times a plus 5. Subtract 5 from over there, and I get 10 equals 9a. And to solve for a, I'm going to divide 10 by 9. And I'll just leave that as an improper fraction instead of converting it to a decimal or definitely not a mixed number. And now, like we've done in the previous problems, substitute it back into my formula, or my equation, and rewrite it. 10 ninths, x take away 3 squared, plus 5. And that would be my equation for this parabola right here. Okay, let's look at one more one more example, but my 9 there kind of looks like an A. That should be a 9, and that's a 9. Let's just fix that up. Sorry about that. Let's look at one more example and go from there. Okay, no x-intercepts are given, just a turning point and a point on the curve. So I write my general form up here. Knowing that my vertex or turning point is 10, negative 2, which represents BT, and the point on the curve here is... 12, negative 4. So I substitute the turning point in first. x minus 10 squared minus 2. I don't need to put plus minus 2. I'll just put minus 2. Now I'll substitute these values in for x and y. Uh, y is negative 4. And I'll solve for a in a bit. x is 12. Simplify inside the brackets first. 12 take away 10 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. And that will become my coefficient there. So I get negative 4 equals 4a minus 2. Finally, I'll solve for a and rewrite the equation. That's a minus 2, so I'll add 2 to the other side to get negative 2 equals 4a. To solve for a, divide by 4. So I get negative 2 divided by 4 equals a. And that cleans up to a nice decimal. So negative 2 divided by 4 just gives me a negative 0 0.5. That's okay. If it's a terminating decimal, I'll, I'll write it as a decimal. That's okay. And finally, substitute that back into my original equation up there for a. And I'm set. So y equals negative 0 0.5. Running out of room. Forget that. Put it right here so I've got more room. y equals negative 0 0.5 x minus 10 squared minus 2. And that's my equation for that curve. Okay.
so that's it. And just to just to review review real quick, uh, when when the x-intercepts are given, we want to use this general form, the factorized form. And if they're not given, and we've got some turning point given, and some other point, then I want to use uh, this general form. That's probably the easier easiest way to tackle these types of problems. Okay. So good luck.